Hello boys and girls and Stingray parents. This evening we're going to kick off Unit 13 which deals with equations and inequalities. And the first thing we really need to start with is since we're familiar with algebraic expressions, that was Unit 2 that we, we just finished that one up, um, what we need to do is we need to identify some of the similarities and differences between algebraic expressions and equations. We'll find out that there's a lot of similarities, but there's also some big differences. Um, understanding algebraic equations is kind of the foundation to working through equations. So let's take a look at some examples. We're going to identify some key components and we'll move on from there. Okay, let's take a look. Boys and girls, let's begin our exploration of equations by comparing and contrasting equations with expressions. At a quick glance, they look very similar, but as we begin to investigate them more closely, soon we'll see that equations have an equal sign. Hence, we have equations. It's, it's a mathematical phrase, it's actually a sentence, uh, where one side of the phrase or one algebraic expression on the one side has to equal the expression on the other. It's almost like a balancing beam. You know, whatever we have on the right, we also have on the left. It might not look that way, but once we solve what the variable is, we'll clearly see that, hey, mathematically, they're equal. What's on the left is the same as what's on the right. Again, that's an equation. We have to, we have to keep the left and the right balanced. They have to be the same thing. When we look at an expression, which we're very familiar with, uh, there, there is no equal sign. Uh, it's an expression, it's a mathematical phrase, but it doesn't have any definitive end. And we can't solve it. Uh, we can simplify it. In fact, that's what we're used to. Let's, let's simplify this first by distributing. You see here, we can go 2 times y will give us 2y. We continue to distribute 2 times the 3 will give us 6. We bring down our addition sign. And then we also bring down the rest of the mathematical information, which is a plus 13. Okay, we distributed. Is there anything else we can do in the simplification process? Yes, combine like terms. Here we have two whole numbers or two constants, 6 and 13. When we add those two together, we get 19. And then we bring down the rest of our mathematical information. And there we have it, 2y plus 19. We simplified this, but we didn't solve it. And we're left with an algebraic expression. It's a phrase, a mathematical phrase, and that's it. But the, the um, unique thing, and what's special about equations, and we'll also learn too later on about inequalities, is not only can we simplify, but we'll actually be able to solve for what this variable is. That's the really cool thing. Let, let's begin by, first of all, we're going to simplify the equation, if we can, and we can, and that is, we'll go 2 times y is, once again, 2y. We're distributing. 2 times 3 is 6. We bring down our operator. And then we, it's very important that we bring down our equal sign. Okay? What's on the left must be equal to what's on the right. So we bring down the rest of this mathematical information. So now we have 2y plus 6 is equal to something. It's equal to 16. So that should, be, that should make the, the wheels inside our head start to turn. And we should say, well, what? I know 6 is 6, but what plus 6 would give me 16? Well, the mathematicians out there know that this 2y, if this is a true statement, 2y must be equal to what? 10. Okay? This has to be equal to 10. Well, then the next question is, well, if, if 2y is equal to 10, what is y? Well, the mathematicians out here say 2 times what is equal to 10? Well, I know that 2 times 5 is 10. Let's give it a try. Let's give it a try. Let's plug it in. Let's, let's evaluate this. Now, we're saying we're, we're guessing here. We're going to say y is equal to 5. Well, let's see if, if this statement then, this mathematical statement, is true. So let's plug it in. 2 times 5, we're substituting y with a 5, plus 6 is equal to 16. Well, 2 times 5 is 10, plus 6, yeah, that is 16. 
And if there's any doubters, any skeptics out there, let's go back to our original equation and let's plug 5 in there. So we have 2 times the sum of 5 plus 3 is equal to 16. Okay, well, 5 plus 3 is 8. We have to follow the order of operations, and when we multiply that by 2, you know what? It is going to equal 16 as well. So there we checked it. We checked our work, and 16 is equal to 16. So even though it looks like we have a lot more on this side of the equation, in reality, mathematically, it's the same value as what's on the right. So the left and the right must be equal. And the trick is just figuring out or solving what the y is. Now, this was kind of an elaborate um, method that we did. We did a lot of uh, in our head processing, um, but and, and mental math is great. But in the upcoming lessons, I'm going to show you a very systematic way to solve for these variables. Thank you very much for your time.